Hey guys, what's going on out there today? Uh, I got a lot of thoughts brewing in my brain, and the first in this video we're going to talk about iads. Okay, so I'm going to play some of the keynote just in case some of you haven't seen it. If for those of you who have, just forward past it, and then uh, when the keynote is over, we'll discuss this a little bit. So let's play this. It's called iad. It's mobile advertising. We're building it right in to iPhone OS 4. Now. What's this about? Well, you know, we have 185,000 apps on the App Store created by tremendous developers. A lot of those apps are free, and, a lot, and the rest of them are really reasonably priced. You've got apps for free, for 99 cents, for $1.99, and we like that. Users like that. But these developers have to find a way to make some money, and we'd like to help them. Now, what some of the developers are starting to do is to put advertising into their apps. And for lack of a, a more elegant way to say it, we think most of this mobile advertising really sucks. Um, and we thought we might be able to make some contributions. So this is what this is all about. It's all about helping our developers make some money through advertising so they can keep their free apps free. Now, when you look at a mobile device, a phone, it's not like the desktop. On the desktop, search is where it's at. Right? That's where the money is. But on a mobile device, search hasn't happened. Search is not where it's at. People aren't searching on a mobile device like they do on the desktop. What's happening is they're spending all their time in apps. When people want to find a place to go out to dinner, they're not searching. They're going into Yelp. They're using apps to get to data on the internet rather than a generalized search. And this is where the opportunity to deliver advertising is. Not as part of search, but as part of apps. Now, the average iPhone user spends a little over 30 minutes every day using apps. Over 30 minutes every day using apps on their phone. Now, if we said we want to put an ad up every three minutes, let's say, that would be 10 ads per device per day. 10 ads within 30 minutes is about the same as a television show. Right? We're going to soon have 100 million devices. That's a billion ad opportunities per day in the iPhone community and iPod Touch community. One billion ad opportunities per day. This is a pretty serious opportunity. And it's an incredible demographic. But we want to do more than that. We want to change the quality of the advertising as well. Now, we're all familiar with interactive ads on the web, right? That's what they look like. And they're more, they're interactive, but they are really not capable of delivering emotion, which is why the majority of ad dollars still flow through television. Because advertisers can deliver an emotional message through television, right? We know what that's like. What we want to do with iAds is to deliver interaction but also deliver emotion. So interactive ads have no emotion, some interactivity. And television ads have a lot of emotion, but no interactivity. And we want to be here. We want to be even more interactive than the, webs, than the ads you see on the web. And we want to get some of that emotion from video. So that's what iAd's all about. It's emotion plus interactivity. The ads keep you in your app. Now, what's that about? On mobile devices today, when you click on a banner ad, it yanks you out of your app, throws you into a browser, and takes you to the advertiser's web page. You may never find your way back to your app. And it's almost impossible to get back to where you left off. So what's the result? People don't click on the ads. Who wants to get yanked out of your app? Because iAd is in the iPhone OS itself, we have figured out 
how to do interactive and video content without ever taking you out of your app. And the user can return to their app anytime they want. And so we think the result is going to be people are going to be a lot more interested in clicking on these things because they're not going to pay the penalty of having to find their way back to their app. So it's built right into the iPhone OS. And for developers to add this to their apps is really simple. They can add iAd opportunities to their apps in an afternoon. Apple's going to sell and host the ads. And we're going to give developers an industry standard 60% split of the revenues. So I'd like to show this to you. Now, what we've done is we've mocked up a few ads. We don't have any real ads yet, because this isn't uh, rolled out yet. And what we've done is we've taken a few brands that we love, and we've uh, used them. We've made some ads for them, basically. Oops, excuse me. Now, these folks are not endorsing us in any way. Uh, they haven't even seen this stuff. Uh, we just love these brands and, and, and uh, use them to make some fun ads. So let's say this is an app, this is an app that gives me some entertainment news. And uh, at the bottom, I have a Toy Story 3 banner. Toy Story 3 is an awesome movie that uh, Disney's putting out uh, in June. And uh, so I click on that banner. I've seen it. It's really good. <laughs> And so you click on the, on, the, on the banner, and we take over the screen. The ad takes over the screen, comes down with animation. All this stuff is done in HTML5, by the way. Okay. It's really easy to do. And uh, you see animation, everything else. Now, you see that X up at the top there? If I just tap on that X, I go immediately back to my app right where I left off. So the user at any time can say, take me back to my app. This disappears, and I'm back in my app. So let's go explore this ad, right? which is really a kind of a universe here. There's a snake in my boat. You know, so I can listen to the characters. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> Got it, eh, Bob? Had it. And I've got some videos here. Again, this is a little HTML5 gizmo that uh, is made available to you know developers, and they can just you know they can make their own stuff like this too. It's real easy. And so I'm going to just pick a video here, and uh, hmm. me. <laughs> right. And of course, if I wanted to, I could uh, just turn this 90 degrees and watch it this way. All right, I guess I have to say play. Hmm. Me. And again, this is all streamed video right onto the phone. And uh, they've included a game in this ad. And uh, well, we've included a game in this ad. And uh, <laughs> so here we go. This is a simple game, and I get to. Uh, Look and see where things are, so that's fine. I'm not very good at these things usually, but I. So there we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this is this is good. So. So I've got a game. I've got posters, uh, and I can just tap here and have them as wallpapers. So again, the advertiser can just uh, give me some wallpaper from my phone, and uh, users like free stuff. Um, Theaters, if I want to see where uh, the movie's playing, there it is right there. All right. We know our location. There's a theater. And uh, so I've got my location. And there's a Toy Story Mania game that I can buy right in this ad. I don't even have to go to the App Store. The ad can sell me the game right here. And I can push this button, and it'll download right onto my phone. So this is an example. Uh, of a new kind of mobile ad. Have you ever seen an ad like this? You know? Anything even close? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So let me, uh, let's go look at another one. Uh, I've got one here that's, uh, that's Nike. We love Nike. And um, this is, we made this ad up for their Air Jordan show, uh, shoe. Again, none of these folks are endorsing us in any way. We just love their brands and, and uh, love their products. So. 
This goes right into a video. And then, uh, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, I can look at design or some photos, but I'm going to want to show you this cool thing, history here. And that, again, somebody built that little navigator, very simple. So this is the, the, the history of the shoe uh, starting in, in 1985, and you, just, you can just flick, flick through the different years and, you know, see how the shoes evolved each, each year if you're really into this stuff, and a lot of people are, um, you know. So again, you can just see the shoe progress throughout the years. Pretty cool. So let's go back, and uh, here's Nike ID. This is a really cool program where you can make your own shoe. And uh, Nike's been doing this for a while, and it's great. And so it says, shake your iPhone for more examples. So I shake my iPhone, get another one. Shake my iPhone, get another one. And there's an app right here, Nike ID, that I can download to my phone, and it lets me build these custom shoes and order them from Nike right here on my phone. And if I want to find a store that's carrying these nearby, uh, again, it'll find my location and put up some places to carry the shoes. Right? So that's an example of what a Nike ad could look like. And here's another one. This one for Target. Target's awesome. And, uh, you know, time to get inspired. Great. And again, you can have animation bringing these things on. I just click on it. It takes over the screen again. Back to school. So I could play that again, or I could uh, build my own dorm room, let's say. So let's see what that's like. I am a dude <laughs> who's into fashion, skateboarding, music, sports. I'm going to say music, maybe. And music, and I'm going to Baylor, Berkeley, and yeah, pick my school, Michigan. <laughs> so let's build my room and, and uh, it's going to put up all this stuff that they carry this Michigan furniture here I want a beanbag chair let's say and I want a wall clock and uh, oh I don't know let's say a Michigan rug and again I can just look at my shopping list here and it shows me everything and I can just go buy it if I want to I can find a Target store, you know, either near me or near my school, because I don't want to lug all this stuff back there, right? It's that simple. So, and again, I can return to my app anytime I want. So there we go, guys. That's not an ad. That's an application. This is absolutely wonderful. Never has a company made me look forward to ads like Apple has. Now I'm looking forward to these ads so I can see these cool movies and stuff, see if they've included. This is going to be great. Google entered the phone business. So now how's it feel, Google, when, when Apple enters your business? How's it feel to get smacked down a little bit because Apple entered your space and they've reinvented the game. You came into the phone space and all you did was copy Apple's phone, copy their, their operating system, their app scheme, their app store. You got into Apple's business by copying Apple. Apple goes into your business, and what do they do? They show you how to improve it. They reinvent the game before you do. This is outstanding. Now we have a way of dealing with our ads, and we can stay within our app. And you know what this means for developers? We're going to start seeing a lot more free games, because if this ad revenue can make them a decent sum of money, then we're going to see a lot more free apps. And I just think it is mind-boggling that Apple enters the market that Google has ruled for so long, and when they come into the market, they show them how it should be done. That's how it should be done, Google. You're the foremost person in search and web advertising. And Apple comes in and shows you how to innovate in your own backyard. Come on, Google. Get with the game, buddy. Get with the game. You know, it goes with the old adage. You can't tell your daddy 
how to make babies. Okay? And the same thing goes for Flash. Flash ignored OS X. I'm sure you all have seen that blog post. Flash ignored OS X. Apple reached out to Adobe for them to write native apps instead of just porting it. And they just ignored Apple. And now it's coming back around to them. Learn HTML5, you lazy fuckers. Flash is, is, is a visual language. I mean, do you even consider Flash designers real coders? I mean, that's a debate within itself. So I don't feel a bit sorry for this Flash bullshit. Y'all can say, well, it don't matter. Bad quality apps go through the App Store no matter how they're written or compiled or blah, 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 blah. But see, it's not about that. There's one thing you're not thinking about. And that is, what if there's thousands of apps in the App Store that are made with Adobe's kit, their, their, their Flash kit to make it run on the iPhone? And then Apple wants to update their operating system. But if they update their operating system, their updates are going to break all those apps created with the Adobe Toolkit. So what Apple's left doing is they're waiting, twiddling their thumbs, waiting on Adobe to upgrade their kit so they can upgrade their OS. Don't you understand? It puts too much control in Adobe's hands. If Adobe wants to put apps on the App Store, they do it by Apple's rules, and that's that. How much respect Adobe has lost from me because they're trying to force their hand. Apple does not want Flash in the store. They've rewritten their TOS, their Terms of Service, to even to state that even more. Okay, so anything beyond now, you're just trying to force it where you're not wanted. Okay, the owners of the App Store do not want Flash. It's all over the news. So how dare you not respect their decision and you're trying to force it. Now you're filing claims with the SEC or the FEC or, or whatever it is. You're actually filing claims? Give me a break, Adobe. Did Apple and Steve Jobs whine at all when you guys refused to support them? When, there was a, when the 64-bit version of Adobe Photoshop and Creative Suite was a year behind the PC, did you hear Steve Jobs whining and crying and filing complaints? Did you? No. All I'm saying is, you're all getting a taste of your own medicine and you don't like it, do you? Well, I say, hold your nose and swallow, baby, because that's just the way it is. Apple's got you over a barrel, and all you can do is fold up and leave, or change with the times, baby. Why can't you start making some HTML5 stuff? Start putting your own stuff on the App Store. Why do you got to force this Flash shit? I know you developers want it, and there's a, there's a bunch of people that want it, but the majority of people don't want it. And it don't matter if the majority of people did want it. The owners and proprietors of the store say it's no-go. So you either hop on board with their rules, or you pull your shit off the store and go develop for Android. That'd love to have you. Okay? Uh, we're, not, we're not under any illusion that Google's going to whore itself out and probably become, you know, the market share leader in so many more years anyway. It's not like Apple doesn't understand that. So why don't you go ahead and get ahead of the game Pull your stupid flash junk now and go put it on somewhere somewhere else. I mean, because flash ain't on Windows 7 series phone, why ain't y'all busting down Microsoft's door? I mean, come on. You can't make a game for the Xbox unless you use Microsoft tools. You can't make a game for the Wii unless you use the Wii tools. And you can't get a game for the Wii unless you get it approved. They're closed systems. So why are y'all all up in Apple's face? Because you want what Apple's got. That's why you want what Apple's got, but you got too much pride to say, "Okay, I'll take it." It's not about it's it's not about it being open or closed because you guys use open and closed things every day of your life, and you don't bitch about it. You're only bitching about it because it's Apple. And now, when it comes to mobile, Apple's Apple's the leader. After all these years. Microsoft, Adobe, all of them are getting a taste of their own medicine. Microsoft was the leader in market share for years, and they still are on the desktop. So much so, they can influence the ecosystem. Okay? Um, now, Apple is at the same point, almost, in mobile market share, that they are the leaders as of now, and they can pretty much set the standard for the way things are going. When, when somebody else takes over, then maybe they can, you know? If somebody else was ahead of Apple and they accepted Flash, you know, what could we do about it? But Apple right now is the mobile leader, okay? They've earned that. They didn't come into the game till 2007, three, four years ago, and they've took over. So it's been nothing but sheer merit.
It's been a good phone and it's changed the game. And you can cry, oh, it's just the Apple fanboys buying stuff. There ain't that many Apple fanboys. There's not 300,000 Apple fanboys waiting in line for the iPad. Some of those are normal people too, whether you want to believe it or not. Okay? Flash is bloated, ugly, crappy. They haven't paid any attention to Mac and now they're getting what they get. Google's been sitting on its ass and not doing anything and now Apple's showing it how to reinvent the ad game. Come on, guys. You all can hate Apple all you want, but there's no fucking denying that they are the tech industry right now. They are the tech industry right now, and everybody else is just following. And it looks like even Google is getting in line. OS 10, brothers.